Okay, so before you draw on your aluminum plate, you need to make sure that it is clean. The plates um, are ground or ball grained at the factory uh, with some grit and essentially stainless steel balls. Um, they're ground from a solid sheet of aluminum, um, but they don't get cleaned very well at the factory. They get kind of rinsed after the graining process. So before we uh, use the aluminum plate for drawing, we need to make sure to clean it off. And this is going to uh, remove all of the dirt as well as um, remove a lot of the oxidization that happens on aluminum. It's a quickly oxidizing material. So first you could see I cleaned off my station. Um, you won't have this problem at, in your shops at Idaho, but um, you need to make sure that there's no grit on the station or anything that can scratch the plate, any kind of hard surface. And then I've prepared a few things. Uh, I'll just say this while this is going. Um, I have, you can see in the background, and what I'm using right now is uh, what's called a Weebrel. It's a soft cotton cloth. I've prepared a stack of about five or six of those that I can use and have easily accessible. Uh, I folded them into uh, quarters, half and then half again. And uh, you'll see me kind of flipping it over on one side and then, you know, turning it to new surfaces frequently as I uh, clean the plate here. I'm using hot water to rinse off the plate um, and give it the first initial clean. And then here, uh, this is a counter etch solution is what it's called. It's a mixture of one gallon of water, one ounce of hydrochloric acid, and one ounce of phosphoric acid. So you'll want to be wearing some gloves when you do this process. Uh, you'll pour a good amount of that onto the plate, just flood the surface of the plate, and then start from the center, work in a circular motion out, and then start going around the plate, kind of in a mechanical motion to make sure that you're covering the entire plate. Get all the way out towards the edges and make sure you get the whole surface really well. Um, you want to make sure this plate is good and clean uh, when you're ready to go draw on it. So um, go over the plate, spend about a minute, uh, maybe a minute and a half each time you uh, add a new or refresh the counter edge and clean the plate and rinse the plate off. Do that. Uh, and every time you spend about a minute. You can see my weave rolls at this point are really dirty. They're coming up really gray with lots of oxidation, lots of dirt on them. Even that first one that I had with just using the hot water on the plate, no acid, um, came up really dirty. Uh, there are different ways to counter etch plates. You could do it with just hot water instead of using this counter etch mix that we have with the acids in it. Um, the hot water feeds the energy bonds um, in the oxidation and the dirt on the plate, the bonds that are attaching them to the aluminum surface, and gives them just enough energy to release, but the hot water doesn't always get enough energy in there to break those bonds. Uh, another counter etch solution is made with uh, diluted citric acid which is pretty good for the aluminum plates. Uh, in our case, we're gonna use a stronger solution because you guys are beginners, uh, and I want you to make sure that you get your plates very clean. Uh, so we'll have a stronger solution to help you out for that. Um, so every time you uh, clean your plate, so you'll do one round of it, the acid, rinse it off, clean the plate off, dump the excess water like I uh, did previously, pour new acid onto the plate, go over the whole surface again for about a minute, a minute and a half, being uh, careful to cover the whole surface, and pressing lightly. You don't have to scrub the plate, but you do want to have a little bit of pressure while you're moving the uh, Weebrel over the surface and letting that acid do its work. Most of this is an acid process. The scrubbing isn't going to do a whole lot for you here. Um, it's mostly the acid that's breaking those bonds and not the physical process of wiping them off. So keep turning to uh, new parts of your weebrels, spend that full minute on the plate, uh, get the surface good and covered, and then when you've done that, uh, go ahead and rinse the plate 
and get that spent acid, all the extra junk off of it. So here, rinsing the plate in between each one, uh, making sure to rinse the tympan. You can see I put this on top of an, an old tympan sheet. Uh, you might be doing this in a blotting sink or a soaking sink for intaglio or maybe even a tray. Uh, we'll have to kind of figure that out. So I made sure that I have a clean surface that I'm working on. Rinse the plate, dump off the excess water, put on more counter etch, go at it again. And you can see as I do this that my weeb rolls are getting progressively cleaner. It's a little hard to tell because it's still pretty dirty, um, but they are getting progressively cleaner. Now, with counter etching, you'll never get it so that your weeb roll comes up white. It will always have some amount of oxidation or dirt on it. Uh, we want to do this till the plate's clean within reason. So don't worry about coming up with a spotless weeb roll uh, while you're counter etching your plate. Just get it pretty good. Uh, usually five or six times will be sufficient. If you find it's still heavily oxidized after that, you might have to go more. Uh, at Tamron, we used to get plates from two different companies, one of them from Tokich, uh, which are the plates that you'll be using. And then we also uh, bought plates from a place called Precision Ball Graining, and those plates were filthy. Uh, you had to counter-etch counter them about ten times before you could start to use them. So it really depends on the manufacturing process. Um, but to the Tokich plates I find uh, five or six times at the most usually gets them clean. Um, as you clean the plate and go through the counter etching, progressively it should start to feel a little slicker as you remove all the dirt and grime and oxidation that's sitting on the surface of the plate. You should feel it start to become a slick surface almost and a little easier to move around on the top of it. Drain off the excess, refresh my acid, and I think this is going to be my last time over the plate. Um, so after this, what you want to do, uh, aluminum is a highly reactive material. So as soon as I'm done counter etching, it's going to start oxidizing. So my goal here is once I finish this, I'm going to rinse the plate uh, one more time. And then I'm going to drain off the excess water, just lift the plate up by the corner and let it drip dry uh, until most of the water is off. And before starting counter etching, uh, just like preparing your weeb roll, you'll want to prepare a stack of newsprints, clean newsprints, or at least dry newsprints um, that, that are fairly clean on them. Uh, no use getting your plate dirty once you've cleaned it. So prepare a stack of newsprints a little bit bigger than your plate that you can use to dry it off. And I'll show you that in just a minute here. But you want to have those ready to go uh, as soon as you're done with this counter etching. You don't want to have to go tear them uh, while your plate's wet and oxidizing on you. So have those ready to go. So rinse off your plate for the final time. The hot water, drip dry on the excess here. So get most of that water off. And you'll see I'll let it go from a flow to uh, where it starts just dripping a little bit. Give it a little bit of a shake. Don't bend your plate. And then I'll take it into uh, the other room. So you can see I have my newsprint already prepared. Uh, I put it down on a newsprint just to help dry the back. Then take a piece of newsprint, put it over the surface, and soak up all of the excess water uh, with the newsprint. And move to dry parts of the newsprint, rub your hands over it to really get in those pores and get everything up. You want to make sure to work quickly. Switch to a dry newsprint, and again rub down the whole surface. And then what I'll want to do is to get those last spots, grab a hand fan, and quickly, either a hand fan or a blow dryer, dry off those excess areas of water. And then your plate should be ready for drying at this point. 
So just make sure it's good and dry and you should be done.